Welcome to Mana's Seal YouTube channel. The previous video link is on the description box or on the top right card. Volume 12 The Paladin of the Holy Kingdom. If they wanted to show him somebody, he must be a powerful noble or someone related to the royal family. The Sorcerer King, trailed by Nia for some reason, was guided to a certain room by Gustavo. It contained several simple wooden chairs. Remedios was seated there, as was a skinny man. The two of them turned to look at the Sorcerer King as he entered, and they both rose in welcome. This is the royal brother in whose veins flows the blood of our Holy King, Caspin Sama. Indeed, his face resembled the profile of the second Holy King, which adored the Holy Kingdom's gold coins. Nia blinked at the fact that someone like this had actually been imprisoned here. Caspin Sama. This is the king of the sorcerer's kingdom of Ain Zulgaon, his majesty Ain Zulgaon, who has come to aid our nation. Oh. Words cannot express my gratitude, your majesty. I am honored to meet you. As others have said, I am the brother who was eclipsed by my outstanding little sister. As the royal brother said something that was very difficult to respond to, Remedios had an annoyed look on her face which seemed to say, are you making fun of her? Still, he was the next successor for the late Holy Queen's position, so she could not put on the same attitude she had held all this time. Thus, Remedios simply cast her eyes downward without saying anything. Ah, is that so? An honor to meet you, royal brother Dono. Then, their eyes met again. Nia watched and wondered what they were doing, and a moment later the Sorcerer King extended his hand, which Caspin took. Shaking hands was a practice that arose among those of higher status. When one compared a man who was simply in the line of succession to the throne to someone who ruled a country of his own, however small it was, the latter would be of higher status. The fact that the latter was also aiding the country of the former, only served to heighten his importance. The fact that the Sorcerer King had not immediately extended his hand was probably a sign of respect to the other side. Truly, he is a thoughtful and generous man. That convinced Thea. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw that Caspin was also nodding and making noises of approval. Your Majesty, I apologize for greeting you in this shabby attire. It would have been well if I could have changed before your arrival, but... There is nothing to be ashamed about. Mere clothes cannot degrade a man of class. You must be exhausted from your long imprisonment. Will you not take a seat before speaking? I am grateful for your kindness. Then please allow me to avail myself of your goodwill. The Sorcerer King was the first to release their handshake, and Caspin sat down after he did. In any event, I am glad to see your highness is safe and sound. Still, how did you come to be imprisoned here? That was because I happened to flee here. Baron Bagnan took very good care of me. How is he? Captain, Custodio. I believe you took him away after he spoke to me. Baron Bagnan's wounds are not severe, and his life is not in danger. However, due to his poor physical condition and great exhaustion, he is still sound asleep. Can the priests not use their magic to aid him? Now would be the time to draw on his intellect, no. The priests have exhausted their remaining mana on healing the wounded, and they are currently resting. I sincerely apologize, but if the situation is not critical, I feel it is better to let them conserve their mana. If that's the case, then it can't be helped, Captain. However, he was the one who brought me here and fought, desperately to protect me. If possible, please, you understand what I'm saying, right? It was not Remedios, but Gustavo who nodded deeply. Alright, then there is one thing I must verify first. Is there anyone in this country who can see through, shape-shifting your illusions? Why do you ask, your majesty? That is because I am wary of demons using magic to hide themselves among the imprisoned people. Caspin looked at Remedios. Captain, can you answer his majesty's question? Ah, my apologies. Please answer on my behalf, Vice-Captain. I do not recall anyone like that. The Sorcerer King went him and sank into contemplation. Caspin then asked Remedios another question. If it troubles the Sorcerer King so, that clearly indicates that this must be a vital question. I shall ask you, again. Can you swear to the gods that you do not know? The two paladins nodded, and then Caspin's gaze turned to Nia. Surely he would not know a squire like herself, right? As Nia thought that, she hurriedly nodded as well. So even Squire Barajit does not know what's wrong. You look puzzled. I've heard your name from the captain. I'm very grateful that you can serve by his majesty's side. My deepest thanks. Nia hurriedly bowed to Caspin. Just so. She is exceptional. I would like a follower like that. What, surely, you must jest. Nia's voice was trembling. As he saw her in that state, the Sorcerer King and Caspin laughed happily. Then, they resumed there, although the Sorcerer King had no facial expressions, of course, serious looks. Well it shames me to admit my ignorance, do demons possess the power to transform into other people? Demons can take human form to make people full, but that does not mean they can transform into others. It is simply that they can take human form, not that they can imitate anyone's looks. 
Therefore, if there is anyone unfamiliar among the people imprisoned here, there will be a need to be careful. In that case, we will need to have the people who were captured vouch for each other. Now, illusions are more troublesome. With illusions, one can take the faces of others. For instance, the Sorcerer King cast a spell, and his skeletal face transformed into that of Caspind. This is an illusion. However, low-level illusions like this one might be able to change one's attire, but not, one's voice. Also, they cannot imitate memories and thoughts. Therefore, they will be immediately exposed, as someone close to the subject speaks to them. The Sorcerer King's face resumed its skeletal form. There are many ways to disguise one's clothes and voice. Therefore, the best way is to speak to them and check for a sense of wrongness. His questions to the orcs must have been intended to guard against that, Ni amused. As expected of his majesty. His considerations are surprisingly thorough. I see. Well, you heard that, no. Go check it out immediately. A moment please. You should also consider the possibility of a demon running amok once it is exposed. Do you not think that letting a powerful person like Captain Custodio stay by your side to protect you would be better? I see. I understand. I will perform investigations with the captain as a witness. Gustavo bowed his head. Royal Brother Dono. That is all I wish to verify. If you have more to say, then by all means. Then, your majesty. As for our future plans, I feel it is necessary for us to head south, link up with the local forces, and then launch a full-scale attack. That is because there were several nobles in prison with me, and I wish to ask them to see who can lend their strength to us. That is the plan I intend to adopt. Hmm. I do not understand this country's nobles, so if you feel that is best, then by all means. Will you not attack the other prison camps and rescue the prisoners there? It is not yet time for that. Leading many people to areas controlled by Jaldabaoth is very obvious, and our rate of advance will become very slow. I wish to avoid an outcome where we lose more than we gain by helping others. Then why not let the civilians flee south while we alone attack the prison camps? Captain Custodio. You were allowed to be present, but I did not seek your opinion. Caspin spoke in a tone that was completely different from how he addressed the Sorcerer King. Remedios clenched her teeth as she bit back her anger. I also approve of Royal Brother, no, Gaspin Dono's opinion. However, you have already taken two prison camps, including this place. I imagine you can continue to skillfully apply the experience gained here, do you not? We shall do nothing, Caspin shrugged. I do not feel we can take this land back without deaths or wounded. The number of casualties will grow from the tens, to the hundreds, to the thousands. There is something else which is more important than this. As they heard his words, which cast the people aside, Nia saw looks of shock cross Remedios and Gustavo's faces. As for Nia herself, she calmly thought, this is all ordinary royals amount to. Caspin Sama, you've changed. In the past, you were a great man who was as kind to the masses as Her Majesty. What's this, Captain Custodio? Are you disappointed? Hmm. Caspin's face twisted. His lips curled, baring his teeth. His razor-sharp gaze was full of mockery. Your heart would be as twisted as mine if you had tasted the same hell I did. I can't spout pretty words any more, huh? They make me sick. As for what did they do to us? I guess you haven't heard yet. In that case, go find someone and ask them. That way, you'll know exactly how evil and blasphemous demons are. He was like a completely different person, or perhaps it would be more accurate to say that the inky black substance under his forcibly repaired personality had emerged again. If possible, I'd like to kill all those demihumans. He glanced at the Sorcerer King, who shrugged and answered. You may do as you please after you've questioned them. I've already liberated the orcs. That can't be helped, then. What a shame. Well, the orcs tasted misery alongside me, although, could you hand them over to me in exchange for the holy sword? I am a magic caster. What would I do with the sword even if you gave it to me? Caspin chuckled at the Sorcerer King's playful reply. On the other hand, Remedio's blank face stood as a contrast to Gustavo's pale features. It sounded like a joke, but Caspin was probably serious. Nia's body trembled. To think he hated those imprisoned demihumans enough that he was willing to hand over a national treasure just to get them back in his hands. What on earth had happened to him? So you will abandon this city? I would like to if I could. But before that, I want to interview some of the prisoners and send messengers to the south. I think that will take a week at the earliest. When we take this land back, I shall offer you a gratuity corresponding to your kindness, in addition to what Captain Custodio has already arranged. I do look forward to that. 